Hello. Thank you for joining me today for the Daily Word. I'm going to be in John chapter 3 today, so you can open your Bibles there if you're not there already. And if you haven't read John 3 yet, it would be great if you pressed pause on this video right now and went and read that passage, read that chapter, and then came back for the explanation. So hopefully you've done that by now. So uh, come back in John chapter 3. And yesterday I told you that signs were the main theme in the Gospel of John. That the signs and their explanation are what move the narrative along in John's Gospel. The signs point to who Jesus is. He is the promised Messiah. He is the divine Son of God. And since that's true, you should believe in Him. You should give your life to Him. And when you do, you will, you will get eternal life. And so that, that's the, John's whole purpose for this book, as stated in John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. This is the goal for his gospel. He, he tells us that. Uh, he, he does the same thing in 1 John. If you look at the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 13, you should read the entire book through the lens of chapter 5, verse 13. So, we, so you should read the entire book of John through the lens that he gives us of John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. Each sign comes with an explanation. So today, the, mir- the miracle of turning water into wine in John chapter 2 receives its explanation in John chapter 3. This is a fascinating conversation. I'm only going to be able to scratch the surface of. Jesus teaches the teacher in Israel about something he should have known because he is the teacher in Israel, which is what John calls Nicodemus in uh, in verse 10. This I've heard called uh, Nick at night because uh, Nicodemus, it says in verse 2, comes to Jesus in this conversation by night. But I want you to notice how Jesus, how Nicodemus connects who Jesus is to the miracles. Verse 2, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you've come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So, Nicodemus knows something about Jesus. He has accurate information about Jesus. He doesn't have enough, but he's, he's on the road to that. And notice he connects the signs that Jesus is doing to his identity. Well, this leads to a conversation about the absolute necessity for regeneration, also called being born again, born from above, born from God, um, also called the new birth, being made alive, uh, new creation. This is absolutely essential. Notice what Jesus says in verse 3. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He is not able to be saved. Notice verse 5. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. He does not have the ability to be saved. And in verse 7, he says, you must be born again. There is no salvation apart from regeneration. This is, so what is regeneration? This is an internal supernatural act of God's kindness, his compassion, his mercy towards sinners, where he purifies the sinner from sin's complete infection of his body, his, his soul, um, and then at the same time gives him or her, gives the sinner his very life. Peter talks about being, being given God's very nature, where, uh, where God recreates the sinner completely anew spiritually. Jesus' point is without this happening, There is no salvation. What do we know from this text? We know that the new birth is God's gracious act of giving a person new spiritual life. We know that this is done instantaneously. We know that it is effective. We know that it cleanses from sin and depravity. It is something the sinner is absolutely passive about. It is something that happens to them. It is not something the sinner actually does. You know that clearly from um, from the illustrations that Jesus gives about birth being born and about the effect of wind. Neither of those things do we have control over. Both of those things we are passive about. We receive the action of being born. We receive the action of the wind. Notice, Jesus gives no steps to being born again. He doesn't give any prerequisites to being born again. He doesn't say you must do this and then you will be born again. Like being born, this is something that happens only once. And for Jesus, this, uh, and for, think about Nicodemus, a ruler, it says in verse 3, the teacher in Israel in verse 10, for the supreme legalist of his day, hearing that this, 
new birth, which is necessary to be saved and enter the kingdom, that this is not accomplished by works, it's not accomplished by the flesh, that is just devastating to his entire system of works righteousness. Or, and it is, so it is, it is devastating to anybody who believes in any system that hopes that good works or being a good person is going to be your ticket into heaven. No, it's not. What you need is the new birth. Well, this teaching on the new birth flows naturally into Jesus' teaching on faith and eternal life. It flows naturally because there, there is no faith in Jesus without the new birth. This is verses 10 through 36, which flow naturally from verses 1 to 8. Some highlights here, just as chapter 2 foreshadowed Jesus' resurrection, chapter 3, verse 14 foreshadows Jesus' execution. Notice verse 14. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That is referring to the cross. So that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And so this, here's a foreshadowing. Again, John does this. He's going he's gonna to tell you about the end of the story before you get there. He's getting you ready for when it comes. Why would Jesus need to die? Well, John tells us in verse 15. Because without that, there's no believing for eternal life in his name. Also, we, he answers the question, John does, why did Jesus come? The answer is verse 17. God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And so God sent his Son into the world to save those who would believe. Why do people reject Jesus? That's answered in verse 19. This is the judgment. That the light has come into the world. That's Jesus. And men love darkness rather than light, for their deeds were evil. They love their evil. They love their sin. And so that's why people don't come to Christ. Inter interestingly, John chapter 3 continues in verse 22 with John the Baptist or John the Baptizer. He gives a testimony about Jesus. Now, in the Old Testament, something was established on the basis of two or three witnesses. Well, so far in this book, we've had two witnesses. Well, really three if you think of the witness of the Father in chapter 1. So you've had the witness of the miracles pointing to who Jesus is. And then you have the witness of John the Baptist, the greatest of all the prophets. He, he points, he is a witness witness to who Jesus is in this passage. And he says he must step aside. He's the best man. But now that the groom has come, all attention should go to the groom. And then one of the, my, one of the first verses that, that, that I, I memorized as a new Christian there in verse 30, that uh, John's saying he must increase, that Christ must increase, which, which correspondingly means that, that I must decrease. And, and that's true in our lives too. We want to live less and less like ourselves and we want to live more and more like Christ. That was my hope as a new Christian, and that, that still is my hope today for myself. And then it seems that, that, the, that John ends chapter 3 with another explanation about who Jesus is. Look at verse 31. He who comes from above is above all. That's Jesus. He who is of the earth is from the earth and speaks of the earth. So that, that's not Jesus. He who comes from heaven is above all. So what Jesus is saying is not human speech. It's not human ideas. These are, these are ideas from heaven. Look at verse 32. What he has seen and heard from the Father in heaven, of that he testifies. But no one receives his testimony. The rejection that, that everybody who knows the story knows is coming. That rejection is going to be seen. Look at verse 35. The father loves the son and has given all things into his hand. He who, and so that's, that's God's testimony about Jesus. He, he loves him. All things belong to him. Jesus is his method, his way of salvation. He has a way. We want to create our own ways of salvation. God has a way, has the way, and that only way is through his son. And you see in verse 36, who believes in the son has eternal life. But he who does not obey the Son will not see life. The effect of belief is obedience to Jesus. And if, and if that's not there, what does it say? They will not see life, but the wrath of God is abiding on him, continues on that person. Like Nicodemus, who believes that, who, who, who has accurate knowledge about Jesus, but has never given their lives to Jesus, who's never believed in him. And so I, I hope that's not true for you. I hope that you're watching this because you know the truth and you love the truth. 
I hope you're watching this because you believe in Jesus. You, not just that, you don't have some, a lot of good information about him, but that you actually believe in him. That's John's goal for you. And, and hey, that's this John's goal for you. Thanks for watching today. See you next time for, daily, for the Daily Word.